those people. And then there are those people. There are those people. The, the neighbor who, who brings you food from their garden and you just loved it. There's the coworker who brings donuts to the office and is always smiling. They're always talking to people. Everyone just loves them. You don't know if they actually do any work, but they're really nice, right? There's, there's the best friend from grade school or high school. There's the friends you go out with after work. There's the people you see eye to eye with on different issues in society. There's the relative who always sends you the nice care package at random times. You don't know why they send you things. They just do and you love it and it just brightens up your day. There's the people who always post cool and inspiring things on social media. There are those people. And then, there are those people. The people you look at, and in your mind, they are different. From all, for all intents and purposes, they are different. And in your mind, they're not normal. They don't have a normal appearance. There's the person who voted differently from you in the last presidential election and will again this next year. There's the kid at school who, who everyone makes fun of. There's, there's the bully at school. There, there's the co-worker who, who everyone just kind of seems to tolerate. They're there and you let them be there. There's the ex who's constantly getting on your every nerve. There's, there's those people you walk by on the sidewalk and they just look super sketchy and so you walk a lot faster. There's the people who post rude, hurtful, negative things all the time on social media. There are those people. So there are those people and those people. And today, God has something to say to you about both types of those people. Our verses from Romans chapter 13, we're on page 11. If you want to follow along and go through those verses again, we'll start with verse 8. The Apostle Paul writes these words. He says, Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another, for whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. I need a show of hands. How many of you like debt? All right, that's what I thought. No one likes debt, right? No one wants to be in debt. It consumes your paycheck. And then you have what left? Not much, right? Nobody likes debt. Now, those who really don't like debt try to do everything they can to get rid of it as fast as they can, right? They want it gone. They want it to be paid in full so badly they're even willing to inconvenience themselves and give up certain luxuries, right? Like, if you're in debt, you probably consider the number of times you go out to eat each week, the, the number of coffees you buy at Starbucks, the, the number of vacations you take each week, you don't want to be in debt, and so somebody who really doesn't want to be in debt does everything they can to pay off that debt. They want it to be paid in full. Here, Jesus says, God says, through the Apostle Paul, when it comes to those people and those people, you owe both a debt. And it's the same kind of debt, that same mentality of you are going to do everything you can to pay off that debt. You owe both those people a debt. Except, unlike the debt in society, this debt will never be paid in full. And you're okay with that. Did you notice this debt that you owe 
is not like a one-time debt. He says it's the continuing debt to love. The way you, you pay off this debt is it's a continual payoff, I should say. You love people. And it's not an off and on kind of love. It's not a love like when you feel like it. It's not a love that, it's, it's not conditional. Like, oh, if they say or do the right things, then I'll love them. And it's not even a love that's deserved. No, you, you love, Paul says. It's a continuing debt to love all people, he says. It's, it's your whole life. You're all in on paying off this debt even though you know it's not going to be paid off ever. You want it to be paid in full and so you live your life with this debt mentality of loving people. Loving both those people and those people. And you notice what God says. He says, when you love this way, when you love with a debt mentality, you fulfill the law. You do what God wants you to do. Verses 9 and 10, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. So God's Ten Commandments, we read them earlier from Deuteronomy, they can be summarized in two parts. Part one is Commandments 1 through 3, love God. Part two is Commandments 4 through 10, love others. Here the Apostle Paul highlights four of the commands from the loving others section and he does so to help you better understand the debt you owe. So on top of the love debt you owe being continuous, he says this love debt is the same way you'd love yourself. Now how do you love yourself? In a lot of ways. You all got dressed this morning, it looks like. You stay warm and well fed. Take care of your body. You do activities you enjoy. You do your best to stay healthy. If things are wrong with your body, yourself, you do everything you can to fix it. Every decision you make in life does affect you and you don't want anything to negatively affect you. And so everything you do is to love you, love yourself. And so here... On top of your debt being continuous, on top of the debt of love to always be happening in your life, it is to be that same kind of love you show yourself. Continuing debt to love one another the same way you love yourself. You owe both those people and those people this debt. Are any of you squirming in your seats? I mean, not physically, but wanting to? Are any of you having like a a mental, uh uh-oh, moment? Why might that be? Why might you be wanting to squirm in your seats, throw something at me maybe, say uh uh-oh in your head? Well, because it's natural to want to love those people, right? Like the, the nice neighbor, the good coworker, the, the best friend. It's nice to love those people because they love you. It's easy to love those people, right? But those people? Love those people. The neighbor who's so insensitive playing music at ungodly hours and has a dog that does not stop. The the co-worker, everyone else just kind of tolerates. The the people who, who think differently than I do on the political spectrum, those people? 
See, there's an, a sinful tendency inside of you and, yes, inside of me that resists loving those people. And it really boils down to the fact that you think you're better. That you think they're beneath you, that they don't deserve your love, that they need to do something to earn your love. There is a sinful tendency inside of you and me, yes, that resists loving those people. Until you realize you were one of those people. See, in God's eyes, you were one of those people. Uh, You were a sinner who lacked love. Have you ever said something to someone that you know you shouldn't have said because you were just so mad at them? Have you ever gossiped about them? Jumped to conclusions or judgments before you really knew anything about a situation? Spoken poorly about them? What have you done that showed a lack of love for someone else, those people or those people? See, in God's eyes, on account of your lack of love, you were one of those people. And as one of those people, a sinner who lacked love, you owed God a debt. You owed God the perfect life of love in order to save yourself. Okay, if you owed God the perfect life of love and yet you've already failed, you can't pay it. You can't pay that debt. There's no way you could pay the debt to God that you owed him. And so if you can't pay a debt, what, what happens? Punishments, some way, shape, or form. And with God, the punishment of hell, a place where you don't even love yourself. You loathe yourself. The Old Testament says. But he loved you anyway. See, even though you could not pay God the debt that you owed him, that perfect life of love, he loved you anyway. And he sent his son Jesus to love you. And throughout Jesus' perfect life of love, he... He loved you every moment and he showed that love through his actions. I mean, he, he loved the sick, the hopeless, the helpless. He, he loved the people that even hated him. He lived a perfect life of love all for you and then that love drove him to the cross where he showed that ultimate act of love as he died for you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends, Jesus said. He did that for you, his friend. And on Easter, he rose, proclaiming that victory to you. You are saved and loved by God right now. You've been changed from one of those people to to one of those people, and not even just a generic people person. You've been changed to God's child, someone he knows by name, someone he loves. And now, he says, go love. He has one command for you. Love those people and love those people. Love all people. So who are those people? Who are those people in your life, the, the nice neighbor, the, the fun coworker, the the best friend. Who are those people in your life? The one everyone tolerates, the neighbor no one likes, the the people who vote differently from you. Who, Who are those people? Right here, God says you, you owe both a debt. You owe both a continuing debt to love as you would love yourself. 
And that debt, you're willing to do anything you can to pay it off, even give up personal preferences and convenience to love them. Maybe you're asking why, especially if you're squirming in your seats. Why should I love those people? One reason, and it's simple. So they see the one whose love you're reflecting. So they can see Jesus. That's the point. And maybe you're now asking, well, how? Give me a checklist, Pastor. How am I supposed to love those people and those people? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give you the, the examples, we'll try something like this or love them this way, because I think you know how. You know how to love those people, right? The nice neighbor, the generous coworker, the fun friends. You know how to love those people because you probably already do. And I think you, you already know how to love those people. The, the one everyone else tolerates, the, the one everyone at school makes fun of, the, the weird people in your mind. I think you already know how to love those people. What act of love would make you so uncomfortable to do for them that you just don't want to do? That's how you should love them, by doing that. We love because he loved us. We reflect the love that Jesus has shown us and we willfully do it, we, we do everything we can to pay off that debt, happily knowing it'll never be paid in full. I'm going to end with a story this morning of what it looks like, what God could do, particularly if you love those people. None of you know this person, but I do. So this is a true story. So she was an alcoholic, she was addicted to drugs. She was in and out of rehab, in and out of jail. She was not a great mom to her three young boys, and I mean young boys. But they loved her. Her parents, her siblings, and yes, her church, her church family. And they loved her when it was very inconvenient, when it was painful, when it was personally exhausting. They loved her. And after years of loving her, God worked in her heart. And she realized she needed to change. And so with a lot of help from those who loved her, and not to mention God, she got cleaned up. And you know what she's doing right now? Loving those people because she knows what it's like to be one of those people. She's living her whole life trying to love those people and help them get to where she now is. A redeemed child of God. That all happened because a few people continued to pay the debt of love that they owed and they did everything they could to pay off that debt. We've grown in the truth of God's word. We, we did that last week and we continue to do that. We've grown in the truth of God's word realizing we were those people. And having grown in the truth of God's word, now we realize we're one of those people, one of God's children and heirs of eternal life. And having grown in the truth of God's word, having seen and experienced that love that God has shown to us, we now just we want to go pay that debt to someone else. And so, dear Christians, as you, as you leave today, joyfully go reflect the love of Jesus to all, having been shown that greatest love by your Savior, Jesus. Amen.